Hello, my friends. This is the day the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. How are you today? I hope that you're doing well on this Monday in the second week of Easter. And I came back on today because I don't often do this. I don't often U-turn. So I'm not sure if it's a U-turn that I'm making to a back to the rest stop. <laughs> but it might be, let's revisit something beautiful that I saw at the previous rest stop we, we were at. So yeah, it's, it's a U-turn. Where are you turning back? Where are you turning back? I want to show you something else um, in the last rest stop that we were at. Uh, so let us go back to the lectionary reading. Um, you all know we're in Easter. This is the season of Easter. There are 50 days of Easter that we celebrate leading up to Pentecost. And yesterday's lectionary reading, one of them, the gospel reading was from John chapter 20, verses 19 through 31. And I wanna go back there. I'm gonna go back there for just a minute. I saw something beautiful and I wanna share it with you. So John 20, 19 through 31, and I will read the whole thing again in its entirety. Okay, so let's read. When it was evening on that day, the first day of the week, and the doors of the house where the disciples had met were locked. For fear of the Jews, Jesus came and stood among them and said, peace be with you. After he said this, he showed them his hands and his side. Then the disciples rejoiced when they saw the Lord. Jesus said to them again, peace be with you. As the Father has sent me, so I send you. When he had said this, he breathed on them and said to them, receive the Holy Spirit. If you forgive the sins of any, they are forgiven them. If you retain the sins of any, they are retained. But Thomas, who was called the twin, one of the 12, was not with them when Jesus came. So the other disciples told him, we have seen the Lord. But he said to them, unless I see the mark of the nails in his hands and put my finger in the mark of the nails and my hand in his side, I will not believe. A week later, his disciples were again in the house and Thomas was with them. Although the doors were shut, Jesus came and stood among them and said, peace be with you. Then he said to Thomas, put your finger here and see my hands. Reach out your hand and put it in my side. Do not doubt, but believe. Thomas answered him, my Lord and my God. Jesus said to him, have you believed because you have seen me? Blessed are those who have not seen and yet have come to believe. Now Jesus did many other signs in the presence of his disciples, which are not written in this book, but these are written so that you may come to believe that Jesus is the Messiah, the Son of God, and that through believing, you may have life in his name. The word of the Lord. So here we are. We're back here at this this particular scripture, and um, and so we'll ponder a little bit on this, and then we will rest and we will stop and ask the Lord to give us um, new revelation as we receive from Him. So here we have this scripture. As I've said in the previous rest stop. Um, Oftentimes we, we come to a certain point in this scripture and we kind of stop there. And I'm talking about the point when we get to Thomas and his doubt. And oftentimes we'll find ourselves focusing on the doubt that Thomas had. We even put a little uh, descriptor of him. We call him Doubting Thomas. And we sort of pin him up in the history books 
in that, and I'm gonna say negative light. Um, so he, there he is, just impaled, <laughs> stuck, um, and 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 can't get down because we have placed him in that position. But yet, just maybe one sentence later, after Jesus shows, Jesus says, you know, believe and not doubt, and then he. Sh he shows him, and as soon as he um, encounters the Lord and experiences what he experiences, he makes this huge declaration that Jesus is not only his Lord, but Jesus is his God. That's huge. And we bypass that. We don't even bring that up in our little Sunday school lessons. We always want to, you know, kind of categorize people and place them in a box, but we don't even talk about the, the huge impact of Thomas saying, you are my Lord and my God. And here's why I'm, I've circled back to this rest stop, kind of U-turn back here, is because when I was pondering about this a little more, and particularly in hearing um, a song about um, um, this popular song. I don't, for copyright purposes, I don't, I'm not going to sing it, but there's some lyrics in it that talks about forgiveness and how we want to be people that have hearts of forgiveness. And we want to be people who don't, don't hold grudges against people, but we want to, in our forgiveness, it's a song, and of course it's biblical, but um, in in our coming to a place of forgiving people for things that they've said or things that may have, you know, we felt wronged us in some kind of way, or, you know, just things that they've said that we might've gotten a little offended over. Um, and we've kind of hold that grudge and we don't let them go. Um, we don't let them off the hook. We just kind of sort of, like I said earlier with Thomas, just hold them up to you said that and you shouldn't have said that. Um, that's what we do oftentimes with this particular text. And this is what I find interesting about that is because in this same text, when Jesus comes to the disciples the first time when Thomas isn't in the room, what does he say to them? Let's look in the word of God. What does he say to them? Um, he comes in, verse 21, Jesus said to them again, peace be with you as the father has sent me, so I send you. So there's a sending now, all right? So he pronounces the blessing, the shalom of God. Then there's a sending, right? And then um, when he had said this, he breathed on them. So he sends them with his, with the spirit of God, right? So they are, this, like I said, we're in the 50 days of Easter, right? We're in the 50 days of Easter on our way to Pentecost. There's going to be a real, we're going to see even more of an outpouring of the spirit on people, peoples, and different nations hearing the word in their native tongue. So we're about to experience this, but here we get it. We get it first that the disciples experience the, the outpouring of the spirit. And, um, and so Jesus breathes on them right so he breathes on them receive here it is come on let's receive receive the holy spirit right and um and then he says this verse 23 if you forgive the sins of any they are forgiven them if you retain the sins of any they are retained I don't know about you. And then it goes right into the next thing, but Thomas, right? Then it goes right into the next thing. But Thomas, who was called the twin, one of the 12, was not with them when Jesus came. I don't know about you. Let's just, let's just think about this for a minute. But don't you find it interesting that Jesus would come into the room and give them a teaching, really, on forgiveness? and hold them accountable to forgiveness, but there's one who's not there who's gonna have some doubts. I don't know. This could be a test, only a test. 
uh, the emergency system. <laughs> this could be a test. We don't know, but maybe it's to the to the point that um, no, they don't know that they're going to experience some doubt. Here they are expressing to him, "Oh my goodness, here's this great thing that happened to us." And you know how it is when we're all excited. Even preachers, you all know it when you get a word and you preach that thing, and um, and people don't get it. <laughs> they they this you know 150 people at your service is 150 interpretations of what you what you just imparted here you are excited about it and some people still walk away and they just still don't get it now you mad you know if you don't hold on to it too much but sometimes you feel like the first thing out your mouth is how did i do how was that did you did you receive the word today did, did, how did that go got it it was all right and it was all right right so might harbor a little something here start to brewing but in this very scripture when he's talking about forgiving we as a people have somehow decided that we're going to place thomas in a situation where we have not actually forgiven him of his doubts. We've not done it because we write Sunday school curriculum about it <laughs> because we preach it about it. And we want to hold him up as in, in this particular, just freeze frame him, freeze frame him with, without understanding that we all have doubts at times. We all come to a place where we're like, God, I don't know about this, right? I don't know. What do you, I don't know. And then he says, you know, don't doubt, just believe. But here God in his grace and his mercy has shown him, given him the ability to touch it. This, 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 is, this, is, sense, this is the senses at its highest degree. This is not even having to use the holy imagination. This is touching it yourself, putting your hand right in there. This is the experience. This is the experience of God without having to imagine it like we have to do. So he, he in his grace and his mercy, he does this for Thomas. And then Thomas makes this brilliant and huge affirmation that you are not only um, Lord, but you are God. This is, this is what we're looking for. We're looking to to hail Jesus as he is deity. We don't, we don't, sometimes we don't, people still don't get the whole triunity of God. They, they're still not kind of fully sensing that he is fully God and he is fully man. Um, make him a good prophet and everything, but we don't fully understand that he is, you know, prophet, priest, king. He is God himself. And so Thomas makes that declaration but I just wanted to just kind of go back to this forgiveness thing. Can we forgive him, please? <laughs> Church, can, can we just forgive him? And, and hold on to where he, he the outcome? At the, we, 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 we stop at the top of his process, but we don't filter the whole thing through and see what the outcome is. The outcome is his faith. Can we forgive him, please? And I'm not saying that we don't have to do preach about doubt, um, but let's just forgive him and say it's okay. They probably had to because this is the lesson. They're, they're about to be sent. And sometimes you're sent with, 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 some in, with a little bit of a test to see if you get it. Who, who do you need to forgive? Well, I want a heart that forgives, a heart that is full of love. We do, we want one, we do wanna be compassionate people. Who do we need to forgive today in this Easter season, season of new life, resurrection, new hopes and new dreams, new possibilities. As God is sending us what lessons do we need to learn? Can we please forgive him for having doubts and not hold him in a position? I'm talking about Thomas. 
I don't know him. You don't know him either. Sure, he had some other issues. We all do. <laughs> but can we please? Who do we need to forgive? Let's do that. Let's rest and stop in that. In this point of um, receiving from God, right? Receive the Holy Spirit. Let, let's ask the Spirit of the Lord to bring someone to our mind that we've kind of stuck them to the, sort of impaled them um, there in a place for something that they've said not fully heard them out. Let's, let's fully hear them out and release them um, for, for unforgiveness. Can we do that? Let's, let's do it. Let's rest and let's stop in that. Ask the Lord to help us. Help us, Lord. Lord Jesus, Lord Jesus, will you help us, please? You are our Lord and our God. Will you help us with our hearts of forgiveness? Help us to suspend our judgment. That's so hard for us to do. Help us to suspend our judgment and to fully sense what you are doing in us, around us, in our situations, and the people that we encounter, even our own brothers and our sisters that we love and we want them to get it and they don't really get it when we come to them and then we might harbor some things in our hearts. The text doesn't tell us that, but that's just human nature. Sometimes we just do that. Will you help us, Lord, help us? Our Father and our God, we thank you for another time of coming, coming to this rest stop as we examine your text and look at your text a little more. We ask and we pray that you would help us in these areas in our life, in our lives, in our collective life, life in our individual lives. Um, Lord, help us to be people who don't look at the faults at people and wanna spotlight it and let it go on for years and years and years, spotlight it as a fault and never see fully the picture that you're trying to show us. Help us, God, to come to a resolve where we can be people who have hearts that do forgive. Lord, we give you praise. We give you glory. Lord Jesus, will you help us? Help us today. You're so gracious to show us yourself. Show us ourselves. <laughs> show us ourselves in the, in the texts. Help us, we pray. Holy Spirit, we, we need you. We need the spirit of the living God to teach us, instruct us, anoint us as we go forth, we pray. In Jesus' name I pray, amen, amen, amen. Go forth, my friends, and I'll see you at the next rest stop. Bye.